Hi, welcome back to my cup of TV. I'm Jenny and it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer season three, episode two. I haven't checked the name, but it will already be in the title so you will already know what it is. Um, so I've just finished episode one where we found out where everybody's at and Buffy has just arrived home. So yeah, I'm hoping we don't skip over um, the reunions with everyone. I'd like to see those and I'm hoping we're gonna find out who our villain is going to be this season, our ongoing villain. And I hope it's going to be Spike. If it's not Spike, I hope that we see Spike and know where he is and what he's up to because, yeah, he was definitely the highlight of the last season for me. So I don't have anything to add and uh, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and Patreon is two episodes ahead. So grab your cuppa, grab your snacks and let's watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer season three, episode two. I wonder if they're going to sit down and have a chat about the Slayer stuff because I haven't actually done that yet that we've seen anyway since you've been back obviously She sounds like my nan my nan was always no matter what was going wrong she'll make a sandwich and everything will be fine <laughs> Just give her a hug. <laughs> Night walk. <laughs> Look at what they're all wearing <laughs> the belts and everything. <laughs> I wonder if Giles knows they wear all that stuff. So I see that uh, David, what's his name, Angel, is still in the title sequence and Seth Green's been promoted to it, so. Aww. Again, hugs. Absolutely not, <laughs> under no circumstances. But you can't keep her out of school, you have the right. I have not only the right, but also the only physical sensation of pleasure of the thought of keeping her out of school. I'm gonna pause it there for a moment. I was thinking about this. Um, so after last season, where obviously he was really happy to expel her and he rung the mayor and, and I kept thinking, he mustn't know then that she's a slayer. Otherwise he'd want her there protecting the, the Hellmouth and everything. Cause he, we know he knows about the Hellmouth and he's a part of something that knows. It didn't occur to me until afterwards that I'm assuming he's on the good side. Maybe because he's so strict about rules and stuff, I assumed that he'd be on the right side of things. But maybe the people he's with are not good. And so they don't want Buffy at the Hellmouth. And this was his chance to get rid of her without revealing who he is or what they're up to. And I also wonder whether maybe he's actually like a demon, like Whistler. He's another character I need to know more about and we need to see it again. And obviously that he was a demon and I don't know that Buffy can tell necessarily with that, I'm not sure. That maybe he's one as well. Hmm. So there's all these little thoughts going on in my head. Maybe I'm just overcomplicating things. What are they all up to though, trying to avoid Hanging out with her. Or is this where she has that kind of realisation they are in couples now and don't have as much time? You must be Buffy. Look at you, aren't you a picture? I sort of took it upon myself to look after her while you were, you know, off and away or what have you. And, well, between that. Uh, your situation and reading Deep End of the Ocean, she was, uh, she was just a wreck, you can imagine. Yeah, so and she's going to be feeling a lot of guilt this episode then. Like everyone's moved on with their lives and forgotten her. Rebond. 
I don't like people like that though. I always want to turn around and just go, mind your own business, you don't know me. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, there's something in this art stuff. Ooh. Okay, so this thing resurrects things. Yeah. Zombie cat. Don't let it scratch you. Oh, so they're a bit cross. Yeah, I think they're all feeling angry about her abandoning them and not contacting them. Which, you know, that does make sense. They should broach it with her, though. Did they check this with her mom? Because I'm sorry, if you invite people around for dinner and this is what turns up. If this is what she wanted, she'd go say, let's go hang out at the bronze. And I'm really surprised that they can't see that. You, you seem to be avoiding me in the one on one space. What? This isn't avoiding? See, here you are. Ah, so it's not they can't see it, it's that they're avoiding having to have Wait, the conversations. With the, okay. They're angry, they don't want to say it in case she runs away again. Oh god, what now? Oh, we're getting a zombie person now. Who's going to talk sense into her? Giles. Oh, Giles is the guy she needs. So the cat went into the room, I was going to say where it is, so these people are drawn to it. Does it only bring back the recently dead? Because how many people are dying in Sunnydale a day? You're leaving again? We're going to get Tough Willow. Or you just stop by for your lip brush and now you're ready to go? This isn't easy, Buffy. I know you're going through stuff, but so am I. I know that you were worried about me, but I know... I don't just mean that. I mean my life. You know, I, I'm, I'm having all sorts of... I'm dating. I, I'm having serious dating with a werewolf. And, and I'm studying witchcraft and, and killing vampires. And I didn't have anyone to talk to about all this scary life stuff. Yeah, let's not forget when you left, she was in hospital. This is okay, really intense. I just want to pause it to talk about that whole uh, scene, which I think was brilliant, so well done. That, yeah, she's not fully understanding how they all felt. I mean, there's the happiness of having her back, but it's that, like I said, the abandonment and the anger, along with the worry for her. Um, Xander, Xander started off as the comedy character. I mean, he still is a lot of the time, but he does speak a lot of sense. I mean, there was the whole thing about uh, forgetting about Jenny's murder to get Angel back and about saving Angel. He spoke a lot of sense on that. And he's kind of the one speaking rational sense here about how everyone felt with what she did. But again, I think if they'd have had 
the quiet dinner that this was supposed to be, then they could have aired all this in a uh, a better way for them all to deal with. Mm. But then I also feel like with Joyce, yes, she's right that she handled it badly and that she's admitting that. But she also needs to accept that Buffy's a teenage girl and when she really needed you and she told you the truth, you did tell her not to come back. So, mm. again, the whole no one's completely right or completely wrong issue. So are these the kind of eat your brains type of zombies? Ah. Oh. Oh, does he know how to hotwire a car? Ooh. Ooh. She is. She's asking for a bit more understanding. Fine. You stop acting like an idiot. I'll stop annoying you. Oh, you want to talk acting like an idiot? Night hawk. Okay, gonna step in now. Be a referee guy. No, let him go, Oz. Talking about it isn't helping. We might as well try some violence. Whoa. Although I like how Oz was being the adult there. I'm just saying, you're all going to say stuff you're going to regret. Ooh. What about everybody else downstairs? What about Oz? Oh, there you go. Cordelia's got him. But someone cares. He's going to get her back into school. Do we have an appointment? I thought I'd start with the state Supreme Court. <laughs> Compassion, medical service. And I really think I can make life very difficult for you. Professionally speaking. And Buffy will be allowed back in. Sorry. I'm not a mess. Oh. Would you like me to come in too? It's Ripper. Nice one, Giles. <laughs> Interesting to see them somewhere that's not school or their houses or the bronze. Okay, so another really good episode. Um, we didn't get the big bad, but I'm enjoying this, the relationship building that we're having to redo. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, it would have been letting her back in too easy for them to just say like, oh yeah, Buffy's back, everything's forgiven, off we go. You know, you do have to have those conversations. Um, they didn't have them in the right way to start with, but eventually they got there. Um, what I liked was that you obviously had the arguments between Buffy and Joyce, Buffy and Xander, and Buffy and Willow. Um, but you also had Oz trying to step in there which I really liked because he could see that where this was going was not going to be productive at all. And I also like Cordelia trying to get people to see Buffy's point of view because Cordelia is normally the one who you'd say she sees her point of view and nothing else. <laughs> but the fact that she's the one saying, hang on a minute, imagine what she was going through before you 
judge her decisions. Um, yeah. And I love seeing Dark Giles, the Ripper, at the end there coming back out um, for Buffy. So I'm assuming from that that she's going to be back in school the next episode and uh, back to this thing with Snyder. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was a kind of the monster of the week type thing, but a good one because that wasn't the main focus of the episode. The main focus was those relationships. Um, yeah. I don't think of any more to say than that. But I definitely enjoyed that. It was really interesting to watch. Uh, again, hopes for the next episode are just Spike. <laughs> um, yeah. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.